Hey everyone, it's Mike the Star Turtle, and this is part two of my review of Game of Thrones Season 5 finale, Mother's Mercy. Now, originally I was just going to do the one, no, the, the scene at the end, because that was what this all, video, the whole video was going to be about, but then I realized when I was going over my last review, part part, part one, I realized I totally forgot to mention the Cersei scene, so I got, I'm going to go ahead and cover that real quick. And yeah, that was a pretty interesting scene, like... Alright, a lot of people end up feeling sorry for Cersei. I have to admit, she is not. I just hate her too much, and she, and unlike Jamie, she has not done enough to make me to make make me like like care about her. So even though I admit that what they did to her was pretty excessive, like I didn't really relish in what they were doing to her as much as I wanted to, I still didn't really feel sorry for her either. So personally, the whole damn scene went on for way too long, which wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been that bad if it wasn't for the fact that almost every other fucking storyline in this episode. Hadn't ended on such a fucking abrupt note by comparison. Like we didn't spend, we, we could have spent more time with other other stories compared to this. They could have trimmed like a minute out, at least a minute out of this scene. I mean, like yeah, she, like she was she was keeping her cool at first, until finally she started to break down. And then I love how everyone was calling her whore. Yet <laughs> most of the people who, who were saying shit didn't seem much better. <laughs> that was amusing, but just goes to show you. The, the world is full of fucked up people. And then she finally gets back to, to um, the, the Red Keep. And she meets Quiburn, who's pretty much the only person who's at this point who still cares about her. Pycelle's like, yeah, you kind of brought this on yourself, bitch. And you're pretty much out of friends, as far as I'm concerned. Because Tywin's younger brother, Kevin, is now in charge. And although... Jersey definitely looked they probably probably playing revenge, especially on Miss Super, Miss Giant Super Nun. She's got a promise to fulfill as far as that so that nun's concerned. But she I don't know if I'm sure how much power she even has left. And we didn't get to see um get to see Tommen, so I'm assuming that his he he's still in seclusion. And once again, the Tyrells have disappeared. Almost every season now, except for maybe a little, little bit in season two, they've always disappeared completely for the last couple episodes after being such a huge presence in the first half. And I'm really getting sick of that. Like, seriously, stop doing this, showrunners. Like, you can't get them for like just one brief scene. But anyway, it looks like Marjorie and Loris and, and Sergi's trial, because she's off, these, she's not off the hook, but they let her go back. Um, she confessed for, to sleeping with Lanzel, but not Jamie. So... She's still gonna be. She's still gonna be tried. So I guess all the trials are gonna be next season. And Super Zombie Mountain. The mountain is now this undead Frankenstein's monster, thanks to Quiburn. And it appears as though the, the, the actual official mountain is dead. Wolverine managed to take him out with him, but he, he still got the last laugh. Anyway, but so this 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 mountain this new mountain is pretty much just a drone. So, but this is, we'll see what happens next with that. But yeah, that's that's the end of King's Landing. Didn't get to see Jamie get reunited with her, with her, with the Cersei, and that won't happen until next season. I mean, there's make sure there's anything else I'm missing. Okay, now for that scene. Yeah, that totally did in fact just happen. Also, another word of warning. For, um. If um yeah yeah if you have, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into a little bit of what happens to the, what happens to the books because even though I never actually read the books and at this point I never never gonna read the books because like this show is hard enough, but but I do know about some certain thir things that happens in the books that people have been talking about. I'm gonna mention that. So if you're if you really want to read the books and don't want to know the all the differences, then then stop watching. Then you already know my reaction. I'm, my reaction to, to what happened at the end of this episode is the same as everyone else's. But yeah, so I heard I anyway I heard about what might happen. I heard that um, that this whole for the watch scene was was possibly going to happen. At least it happened at the very end of book five. But in the book, I heard that it um, actually the way it ended, it was still a little bit more ambiguous as to whether or not John was really dead, as opposed to this episode where it's pretty much clear he's dead. So yeah, so he's just chilling, just like thinking about what's going on. He's still got a lot in his mind. Then Ollie comes in saying that they've got news about Benjen. That one of the wildlings found, that knows that he's alive. And he goes over, and Alistair is like aiding, and they got the heroic music for a second. And Alistair's saying, "Yeah, yeah, I'm collaborating the story." And then, then he goes over to where they where he thinks the guy is being held, and he sees a sign that says "traitor." 
And I think, and I, I, I imagine his heart just totally sank when he saw that sign. And then Moby turns around. <sighs> a dagger right in the gut. It was a long dagger, too. Courtesy of Sir Alistair. For the Watch, then every other, all the other seven rangers that are there. For the Watch, over and over again. And then Ollie. And John just looking to, well, totally heartbroken. And Ollie is crying. I think he already, like, this is, this is like, a, they went, they totally Julius Caesared him. Like, seriously. And, like, you can, and, and Ollie's Brutus. Other people have made the comparison, too, so. But, Ollie just delivers it, and he says, for the watch, too, just like everyone else. But you can tell he's probably going to re probably regret this already. But, too late to go back now. And, everyone just leaves him bleeding, and he, he walks away, and we get that final shot. Or he's still bleeding, and he's got no life left in his eyes. I knew this was coming, and it still hit me ho at home. Like, because like it, it's pretty much confirmed that he's dead. When I was listening to Janelle Walden's um, predictions video for the season, um, she 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 said that she found out that that Kid Harrington to cut his hair, which was against his contract. And once I found out about that and the further watch scene, I'm like, yeah, odds are they're probably gonna kill him off for sure. I was really hoping they wouldn't. I was hoping at the very least they leave it ambiguous. But I, I, I read an interview with Kit Harrington um, this morning, and it, at least as far like from what the, what the, what, the, what, the, what the, I've been hearing, what what he was saying, he's gone for good. I mean, like you think it'd be possible for him to be resurrected, and because Melisandre is still Castle Black, last we checked. But even if that does happen someday, it sure as hell will be next season. And if, um, especially if. Um, they're they they're still planning on ending it as after se at season seven. Then, yeah, I don't know. If we may never see him again. Same thing with Lady Stonehurt. Um, although who knows? They might. Who knows? May, may, it'd be interesting if they actually maybe combine like Lady Stonehurt and John, both being resurrected and becoming one undead combination of Catelyn and John. That would be interesting. <laughs> we certainly we certainly be unorthodox and and um, at least I I never seen it before. At least not in a live action show. <laughs> But, I don't know. I don't know. Like, it looks like John might be really dead. Because, like, especially with what I've been hearing. Now, commentary about that. The way that Alistair set this up, it was really just, like, seven guys. Like, it was in the middle of the night. It's, it's entirely possible, despite the fact that there's still a lot of people who, a lot of people in, in the wash who hate Jon Snow right now. It's entirely possible even some of them would still be against what this what was going on here. That they they'd be um, they they think what 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 the, what just happened was wrong, which is why they were so clandestine about it. Because if you think it was most of the watch was with this, they would they there were a whole bunch of people there, all just taking their turn saying for the watch over and over again. But there's only like a few guys in, like in the middle of the night like if they wanted to be stealthy, and also if they really if they really wanted to break our hearts, they could have right, right right below the sign that said traitor, they should have put um Ed and um. And um, and uh, ghost bodies, but it appears that ghost and Ed are both still alive. And uh, so yeah. And honestly, I don't. I I find it hard to believe if Ed if Ed doesn't. Show, Ed's not the smartest guy in the in the in the bunch in the bunch. But I I, I find it hard to believe that he won't really will automatically believe this was Alistair. I was actually hoping it wouldn't be Alistair. I was really hoping that despite. Despite the fact that as much as he hates John, that he'd still be loyal enough to, to, to the whole code of the Watch that he would never do something like this. Because I believe that I'm pretty certain he either died during the Battle of the Wall in Book Three, or at least he was transferred out of there and was somewhere else. I'm pretty sure he's not in the picture. So that, yeah, fuck him. But at the same time, here's here's, here's the thing I got I gotta say. As much as I want to entirely blame the, the Watchmen for doing this, John did. Did not do a very good job asserting his authority. Like he, at first he was after he, like when he beheaded Jonas Slint because fuck that guy, good riddance. But when you think about it, it's like at, when he made peace with the Wildlings, he was he was way too nice about about, about um about telling people what this is what it's got to be. It, like he was just like this is how it's got to be. We can either live with the Wildlings or we can add him to the army of the dead. He should have been like bitches. We could we, we either live with the Wildlings or or we can fight him on later when the White Walkers turn him into zombies. Especially after Hard Home, I, I guess he was just too damn destroyed after what he saw. But he should, when the second he got back, he was like, "All right, guys, you really you can hate me all you want, but right now we we, we gotta fuck, we gotta fucking get our acts together. We gotta put these wildlings to work. We gotta we gotta get defend. We gotta get the wall ready to fight because this is gonna be even worse than what happened last time. And you know what? If you hate me, tough. 
when, when this is all over, if, we're, if by some miracle we're all still alive, then you can get your revenge on me. Until then, fuck off and put and, and just bear your fucking feelings, because we don't have that time for him right now. But he didn't. He was just totally quiet. He he wouldn't. He, he had his as 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 um K. Arden said in the interview. He, John had his blinders on. He was thinking about the big picture too much and wasn't focusing on the people around him. And so. If, I, I think if he had really fought hard to assert his command, like, really, like, say, this is the way it's got to be, and, like, really tried to it, to, to um, hammer it down to everyone what this, how dire the situation was and that we really needed this to, all to happen in the Wildlings. Yeah, yeah, hate him all you want. I hate him too, but you got, we have to, we need him, so so get the fuck over it. But he wasn't. He just kept being quiet and skulking around in the, not skulking around, it's just, just he's, 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 he's just stayed in the shadows. He wasn't doing much. He should have asserted his command, and so... At the very least, he should have been on guard for this, especially since he, he himself admitted that half, the, at least half the watch hated him, and we're getting, we hated him even more after 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 what he did. So, also, I have another thing I want to point out: Why the fuck did, did they um, go to Castle Black after after Naruto? Why didn't they just sail directly to the East Watch by the Sea? Because I've seen I've seen a map of Westeros, and the um, castle on East Watch by the Sea would be they sailed directly there from Hardhome. I mean, maybe they could have had, had like a maybe a deleted scene where the ocean got frozen, so they had to. They had to so they had to walk on land, and maybe the mountain pass from there to, to East Watch East Watch was just too tre- too treacherous for most of the old and sick. So they decided to just go straight to Castle Black. It was flat. I don't know. Just a little passing line about that would have been because like, why the hell did they just why the hell did they just go to East Watch by the sea? Seriously. Um. And better yet, why didn't Al- why did Alistair even let him through the gate? If this was gonna like like you think if he if he if he hated what was gonna happen, why why didn't he just um because like, now the wildlings are already behind the wall. What's well, left of them anyway? Who would have? That would have been part of the army of the dead if they if they had been left behind, but like he waited till after the fact to kill. Like um, I mean, it's possible he just d- didn't make the decision until now, if he was still indecisive, I guess. But because he he had plenty of opportunities to kill John before now, before the wildlings came back. We came back. I guess he was hoping that we, the wildlings would kill him. Maybe that's what happened. I guess. But so yeah, yeah, I'm still pretty depressed because it, it it's possible. That he may get resurrected, but then again, it's also possible. It's possible in the same way that they might still bring Lady Stoneheart back. That just it's that kind of possibility. So, in which case is very unlikely. It might happen, but we, it's best to not get your hopes up. I'm not getting my hopes up. I like it to happen, but but I guess the only question is where the hell are they going to go from here? Yeah, I'm not going to do an overall season review because at this point, there's really nothing else, nothing else for me to say. But I, I got to say that I will say that this season. I'm not sure if it's my favorite season, but I think it's definitely a lot of people hated this season. I actually was enjoying it a lot more than most people in the first few episodes. A lot of people were complaining how slow it was. Um, I'm not sure if it's a, it's a talk about level season four, but I think I think this is one of the best seasons, despite how slow it was in the beginning. The only real downside to this to this 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 season, in my opinion, was the Dorn stuff. Once they got to got to Dorn, because it started out cool when they were just on their way to Dorn, then they got to Dorn and it got boring. And some of, some of Arya and and some of King's Landing were a little boring at points. For the most part, I actually was I was enjoying this season, and now 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 we know why the, why they included that battle at Hardhome, so it would give John one last epic moment of heroic badassery before the end. So at least we got that. So I can't complain too much. But yeah, so the gods have mercy on the on the, on the Watchmen at Castle Black now, because the White Walkers are coming, and when they get there, they won't have any mercy. Mother have mercy on them. So, all right. Well, if you like this video, like, um, like, my, check out my channel, subscribe. If like, I, I don't just do Game of Thrones stuff. I do a lot. I focus mostly on obscure like movies, shows, and other type of stuff, and sometimes video games. So, check out my channel, like it, subscribe, and all that good stuff. So, and I'll probably be doing reviews next season of Game of Thrones. And I don't know if I'll be covering Walking Dead this season. This coming season, we'll sh- we'll see, but. Definitely Game of Thrones. So. Be vigilant, everyone, because winter is here. But it's it's on, but it's just on pause now for another 10 months. So I'll see, I uh, guess we'll, we'll see you all then. And also, I guess Jon Snow really knows nothing now. Because, you know, he's dead. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs>